you know that your life is a life. You know that, did you know that your life communicates? Your life communicates. Our life is meant to be a life of praise unto Jesus. We learn how to make our life a praise by obeying the Spirit of God, by being where the Spirit of God is drawing us to be. And that's why the, the house of God is an important place for every believer to consistently be in. And outside of that, you have the personal time that you spend with God. But all of that is shaping you and making you into an instrument of praise. It's making you a servant and a son. There's a scripture in Ecclesiastes that says, it says that it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than to hear a song of fools. The Bible classifies a fool as a person. It says a fool has said in his heart that there is no God. So a person that disobeys the word of God, disobeys the spirit of God, is not mindful of the will of God unto obedience and faithfulness to God, is living a life that's not praiseworthy and a life that's not pleasing to God. So you come to the house of God and you meet with God for fellowship and you do what God tells you to do because he transforms you so that your life, not just the actions that you do, but the heart behind the actions and the, the very life that you live is satisfying to God to where it's like music to him, music to his ears. Your service to him and to man, your worship, when you pray to him, whether you're praying in the spirit or you're praying in your in your natural language, when you are preaching his word, all of this can make a sound of praise when it flows from a pure and a sincere heart. That, that, that pure, sincere heart feels that obedient life. But you know that you're hearing a song of fools when you listen to that, when you watch a person on TV or you watch a person on the internet or you go and join something and when you leave these people or if you were to do the things that they tell you to do, then it makes you a fool. And how does it make you a fool? Because it makes you do things that communicate that you that there's not a God out there that runs your life. And that there's not a God out there that loves you and wants you to, to obey him. So because God loved you first, he wants that love in return. And that love looks like commitment and devotion to him, learning about what it takes to walk with him and endure with him, to persevere as a, because in your perseverance was a result of your focus and your understanding that going to him, trusting in him and relying on him for direction and instruction will always position you to be successful and to be what you are required to be. So when you 
intentionally listen to people who sing things to you, who minister things to you, because there are people that are outside of Jesus that are ministers. They're teaching you ways to get rich. They're teaching you ways to advance in your career. They're teaching you ways to be a more charismatic person. They're teaching you patterns of thought that can lead to more influence or whatever life endeavor you're, you're currently on. When If you take what the person says and you apply it to your life and it doesn't make you more like Jesus and it actually makes you disobey Jesus, that's how you know you're hearing a song of, of fools. The expression behind what's being said because praise is more than just the words. So it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise, to hear the, the people of God point you to God and tell you what God expects once you meet him. That's the rebuke of the wise. And a rebuke is not meant to embarrass you or humiliate you or demean you. It's meant to... Christians are like facilitators. We don't make things worse. Facilitators make things better. Facilitators bring control. They bring vision. The Bible says if there, there's, where there's no vision, the people perish. So they, they, they place, they make sure that your eyes are, are on Jesus. Your focus is on Jesus. The facilitators don't limitate. They don't bring limitations. They can push past the barrier of limitations. And they position, because they position themselves to be an example and to be beneficial to themselves and to everything that comes close to them. They're also, they also can benefit the people that are around them. So hearing the rebuke of the wise positions me to become more wise in my decisions and in my life and how I think, and how I learn and how I can apply what I learn. And it, sanctifies my heart of the foolishness that is placed in my life. So that's why we renounce the world because the world is driven by foolishness. The music, the entertainment, the entertainment industry, be it sports or Hollywood or um, you know, desiring to desiring to live life and the Spirit of God is not your motivating and driving force by which you live because the Spirit of God is making you more like, like, like Jesus. So it's important to know that there is a sound that we make to God and he wants that sound to be a, a sound of glory, a sound of prayer, a sound of glory, a sound of holiness. Blessed is the man that knows that joyful sound. So because the joy of the Lord is our strength, Because Jesus is the light of our life, when Jesus takes over you and he makes you into a joyful sound, he changes you and, the, and, then, and then he becomes the light of your countenance. And that takes you away from the foolish life and mentality that drives you away from God and makes you an enemy of God.
So the, so the humble are always going to position themselves to hear from God, whether it's, if it has to be rebuke. Because there's love that's in rebuke when it's done. When it's done by the Spirit of God. The devil wants to make us fools. He wants to make our, our lives a sound and a communication that we are fools. But Jesus wants to make us righteous and holy. He wants to make us like him. The devil wants to make you disobey. So the spirit of God combats the spirit of the world. turns you from a fool to faithful, a fool to faithful. So may the Spirit of God make us faithful and truly make our lives a life of praise so that we can do that which is good and perfect and acceptable will of God.